another potential upset is the um, the rise of, of the socialists as co compared to the last parliament, although with all the caveats applying that Sam has already mentioned about the phase of the cycle that we're in, um, someone like myself who's been covering the Eurozone crisis could attempt to interpret such a swing to um, the effects of austerity, the effects of income loss, especially in peripheral countries, um, but also very low growth rates and un very high unemployment rates, even in more core countries, you know, even deteriorating uh, by economic situation in France, for example. You've got to think about the fact that in 2009, the socialists did the worst they'd ever done in the European elections, down to around 25% of the seats in the parliament, the lowest vote share. And in the big member states, particularly the socialists, did in the SPD got historic low uh, in, in 2009. In Germany, uh, Labour got a historic low vote in the UK. Uh, the French socialists did very badly in 2009 because a lot of their voters went to the Greens. The Greens did very well. And when the Greens are, uh, are unlikely to do so well this time round in France. Um, so in a sense, it's a pendulum swing. The socialists did it very, very badly in 2009 in some of the really big member states. And so the pendulum swing naturally will mean that they'll come back up. But I agree with Martina. Um, I think it's going to be very close. I think, we, you know, Kevin and I have tried to run some simulations to say, let's just think about what the confidence interval around some of these numbers are um, and try and run some simulations about what would happen with this using some standard statistical techniques. And around about 40% of the time, we get the EPP coming out bigger than the socialists, and around 60% of the time, we get the socialists coming out bigger than the EPP. So, so even though it might look at face value, socialists are a little bit ahead right now, it's still too close to call this far out from the election.